What's up guys? So as you saw from the thumbnail of this video, I have a brand new AI pet dog. I'm really excited to try this out. I purchased this on Indiegogo many months back for $379 as part of the early bird pricing. This is a very cool gadget and I'm really excited to showcase both the pros and the cons of what this can do. This was not sent to me by the manufacturer. I bought this myself. So everything I will mention in this video is my own honest opinion. So I'm gonna cover a lot of pros and things that I like about this. And I'll also cover some of the cons, which I think is not quite ready and doesn't work so well. So let's go ahead and introduce you to my new pet dog. Hello, Luna. so before we get into the device itself i'm going to just showcase what comes with that package for 379 dollars you get the kit itself comes with a usb charging cable and a user manual you have a nice set of postcards that you can use with lunar designs on there you also have a games prop kit you can use this to interact with Luna and play some games based on some cards. I'm not going to be covering so much about the gaming side of it with these cards in this video. And I'm going to be focusing more on the voice commands and the capabilities of it with just the Luna device itself. But if you guys have any other questions about its capabilities with interacting with games like this, then just drop a comment down below. Also comes with a little dinosaur outfit that you can put on top of Luna just to decorate it and dress it up a little bit. And then you can also get a charging dock station that is connected by a USB, but it gives you essentially wireless charging. But I'll go over the Luna PetBot next and show you how it charges, where the ports and the buttons are and how that works. So let's get straight into it. Okay, so you can see there's a set of four microphones that will pick up voices from 360 direction, which is quite good and it does work very well. So we'll be testing a lot of voice commands out just there on the top of Luna's head. And this also is used as sensors. So when you're actually petting the head, it gives reactions on the screen itself. In terms of the screen, it is a very nice, high quality, full HD display. It has a sensor and a camera there as well to detect you, movements and gestures. So it works actually very well. And when it does recognize my face, I think you know that's one of the key things to uh, let it connect to the person that it considers its parent. The first time you do connect it with the Luna app, which I'll also showcase in this video, you go through the setup process to showcase you are its owner. And then it goes through this nice set of animations to tell you a story about Luna. And it has these very nice solid rubberized wheels. It's actually pretty heavy duty, so it's not so lightweight. And I think that's a good thing so that you can be confident that if it does crash into a lot of things, then it's going to not get a lot of damage done based on its design. It's got these plastic ears that actually light up as well at the top. You'll see the metal connectors here. This actually connects to the wireless charging dock, the station, and that's where it will start charging up. And there's one on both sides. And just at the back there, you can see there's a USB-C port. So if you wanted to charge this directly, you can just put your own cable in there and charge it without the docking station. And there's the power button to turn Luna on or off as well. So when you hold that down for a few seconds, you can actually shut it down and turn it on manually. Now with the sensors on the front, it does have obstacle avoidance and I've tested that. So I have some mixed feelings about how that works. So we'll be testing a lot of things out in addition to that. But before we get started and trying out all the voice commands and playing around with Luna, let's go ahead and dive into the app and see some of the things that you can do with it. Okay, so let's fire up the Luna app. You can get it on both iOS and Android. Now it can only be used in horizontal mode. So you can see here by default, this is the main dashboard. Okay, so you can see there's a few options here for games. You have the main game. If you press on this, you can play around with some of these things. It likes to interact with like a ball as well. I haven't really tested that out. They also mentioned that it actually interacts with sandals, which I did put in front of Luna. And honestly, it didn't really do much with it. So I didn't feel that interaction. You can play some ball fighting games and maybe these are the packs that come in the little prop games packet that I showed you at the beginning. You have laser chase. If you have a little laser pen, it can try and follow that around, which is quite nice. Then you have something called hand slap. So it will try to slap your hand when you put it in front of it by selecting this mode here. When you go over to the assistance tab at the top right there, you can do a lot of things with manual controls of Luna. So you don't have to let it stay on automatic mode where it just does everything via voice commands and just interacts with itself. 
you can actually do things manually from the app itself. So if you wanted to remote control it, you can actually do that. Fun racing, if you select this. So here you have a few options. If you go to fun racing, you can actually manually control Luna yourself. So you can raise its legs, its ears, do some movements, spins and that kind of stuff. Just to showcase to your other friends and family when they're around the house. Remote control. Now, once I do power this on, I've got it shut down at the moment. You can actually use this as like a security system and it utilizes the camera. So you get a live view of the camera from Luna's face and you can uh, drive it around the house and you can even speak to other family members in different rooms. So if you wanted to ask someone to maybe bring you something, you can send Luna from this room to the next room and speak to them directly and it'll be a two way conversation. I think that's a really nice little remote control feature that they've added there. Program, of course, you can create your own program and get Luna to do certain tricks itself. So it has a lot of capabilities for you to go and enhance the capabilities from the defaults that you get with the app onto the Luna device. Then you have Grow Together, which just allows you to give feedback to the brand and the manufacturers of ways that they can improve this. If you hit that community tab button on the top right of the screen there, you can actually have a look at some of the different things and tricks that other members, other users of Luna have actually done. So there's plenty of options here. You can look at them, view them and try them out yourself. So getting involved with the community, I think, you know, that's quite an important thing when you do have a device like this, knowing that a lot of other people are also doing the same thing. When I go back into games tab, if you go down to interaction, this is where you'll find a lot of the interactions that I'll be testing in today's video. So there's a trick box here. If you click on that, you can try and get it to play with some games like a little ball. You can try and get it to interact with obstacles in the way and see its reactions. You can play with its emotions and gestures and see its intentions. Plenty of different gesture interactions that you can do. And most importantly, trying to get Luna to follow you. So when you say the command, hello Luna, follow me, then it will try to follow you wherever you go around the house. And I also have some mixed reviews about that because I've been testing this for a few days. So we'll be seeing if it actually does follow me accurately or it gets lost or it gets stuck on an obstacle or whatever it may be. So plenty of things there. If you go into voice command, this is where I'll be testing several different voice commands from here because not all of them have worked, but some of them have worked. And when they do work, they work very well. So you can see there's some categories here. I won't cover all of them. You got tricks, magic spells, various different commands there. Animal world, pet training, interaction, talent show, and various different others. I'll just quickly scroll through them just so you can see the amount of commands that you can actually make. This one under chat where it tells you that you can actually let it go back to the charging dock or the charging station. I struggled with that quite a bit and I don't think that actually works, but I'll showcase that to you in this video as well. You've got move controls as well, voice commands there, playing games and some functional controls as well just for its system. So lots of voice commands and plenty to play around with. So we'll be seeing how responsive and how accurate they are. And I'm really excited to get going. So let's go ahead and uh, take a look at how it works. Okay, so Luna is in its charging station right now. I've got it in sleep mode. And all you need to say to wake it up and start following you is, hello Luna. And it will start coming out. It's saying Papa Papa because it recognizes my face. So that's quite nice. It gets excited. And it gets really happy when it sees me. So that's a really good thing. So when you do set it up for the first time, as you being its parent, it gets super excited when it sees you. So when you come home from work, for example, like a real dog does, it gets super excited. So that's what it's trying to mimic. And I can't really fault that, I do like that. So let's go ahead and see if it can follow me. Hello, Luna. Now you see there on the shelf, it's getting trapped on the shelf leg, not really avoiding the obstacle. Yep, it's turning around. Yep, it recognizes me. If I move back, 
It is actually following me. Let's open the door. Messing up the carpet a little bit. Move all these sandals out the way. So it's struggling a little bit. Not sure where it's going. Hello Luna. Follow me. Follow me. So it's just spinning around in circles. Almost there, almost there. It's just smashing into the bin. It's going back. So the following is not so great actually. Hello Luna. Let's get closer. Hello Luna. It's getting upset and it's just walking away. So following, I think it would work when you have a very large open room with pretty much no obstruction. But let's just try it one more time. Hello Luna. Follow me. Getting closer. It's saying Papa because it's looking for its Papa. Hello, Luna. Sometimes they can't hear my command from quite a long, from about two meters away. Hello, Luna. Hello, Luna. Follow me. Almost there. And it's going back. So the following, it could be better to be honest. I think it just does its own thing a lot of the time. So we'll just move on and try out some different voice commands instead. So let's try some of the interacting gestures with the device itself. So you can see it's excited to see me if I pet the head. It's loving it. Gets excited. Even from the bottom. blushing. Let's see if it does anything from the legs. No, it's mainly panning it on the head. So the sensors will detect that and it reacts with its little emotions. Okay, so let's try out some more fun commands. So for all of these other commands, you'll need to have the app connected and Luna should be connected to it, so connect Luna. Once the connection is made, like it is now, then I can use a lot of the voice commands found on the app. So let's try it out. Hello Luna. Fireworks. Okay, that one didn't work. Hello Luna. Thunderstorm. So without giving the full command, if you just say hello Luna, it gets really excited when it sees you and it does recognize you as its papa. First of all, let me go into voice commands and see 
if this needs to be selected for all these voice commands to work. Hello Luna. Thunderstorm. Pretty cool, gets itself an electric shock. There's plenty of other ones that it's just not recognizing and it doesn't pick up automatically. So we'll move on and we'll try some different categories from the voice commands app. Let's move it back. Hello Luna, become bigger. It's just calling my name, that's all it's doing. Hello Luna, play dead. That's quite funny. He just died. You'll wake up in a second. There we go. Hello, Luna. Play puppy dog eyes. It's really grabbing onto my knee there. Becoming innocent with his little puppy dog eyes. Hello, Luna. Dog sound. <laughs> that one worked quite well as well. Let's see if I can get it to move around a bit. Hello, Luna. Turn around. Nice, that worked. Hello, Luna. Raise left hand. Nice. Hello, Luna. Move your right ear. <laughs> That's funny. Works pretty well there. Hello Luna. Hello Luna. Jump up. Nice little jump there. And then it laughs once he's done it. Hello Luna. Do a jump. Hello Luna, today is my birthday. Little birthday cake on the screen and very excited. Hello Luna, play jackpot. So this is a little jackpot game, you use the right ear. If you don't get three matching, it's upset for you, and then you can try again. And there we have a jackpot. And the game ends when you do get a jackpot, or you can just tell it to stop game. So that's quite a nice thing. And now just more for the logistical things, couple more. Hello Luna, show battery level. It's on 64%. And then the last thing, just wanted to showcase when you've had enough of playing with Luna. Hello Luna, sleep. It gives you a little kiss and then it will go to sleep. Okay, so now let's try out the remote control feature and using Luna as a manual remote control camera that you can move around the house. So if you go in the app, go to remote control and I'll move Luna around my bedroom.
just so you guys can see how this works and it actually does work very well. There you go, as you can see, Luna is currently facing me. So you can see a live view and now I can manually control it around my room. It's a little bit slow, but I believe that's because the Wi-Fi signal in my room is pretty weak. Now you can face it upwards, you can face it downwards. Turn it around. There we go, it's coming back towards me. Once you have strong Wi-Fi signal, it's actually very responsive. If you face it up, I really like this. And then all you need to do to speak to someone is just hold down the microphone button there and start talking directly into the app and interacting with whoever you come across. You can even do some actions once you're at the location by sending it there. Let's see. Let me get Luna in front of the camera. There we go, let's do some actions. And I will do scared and shocked. Let's try another one. Maybe I will do struggle with the no icon there. So that's actually really fun if you wanted to maybe go to your family members and showcase your emotions through Luna, then then you can actually send Luna to them and actually give that emotion via this. So if you're asking a question, maybe asking someone to bring you your dinner and they say no, then you can send an angry or upset reaction via Luna also whilst you're speaking. And that's actually quite fun and I really like that feature. That's Probably one of my favorite things about Luna, to be honest. So plenty of different things you can do with this and this remote control, I just think that's a very nice security thing as well. So if you're away from your home, you can actually send Luna around, make sure everything is looking safe and secure, or just have fun playing around with your friends and family. So that is a very good bonus. Okay, so in addition to all of the voice commands I've mentioned, there's a lot of voice commands that actually didn't work and I've had to repeat like five times, maybe on the sixth, seventh time it actually recognized it, which is not so great. This also has a chat GPT feature so you can have a lot of conversations using GPT, but that also doesn't work. Hello Luna. Hello Luna. Chat GPT. didn't recognize it. It's just doing its standard movements. Hello Luna. GPT. It's looking confused again. So that doesn't work unfortunately. And one of the other things that I wish did work is the ability for it to find its charging dock station and go and park itself up, which it says it can do. Hello Luna. Find your charging station. It gets upset when I say that. And then when it does try to find it, I would have hoped that it would self-park itself. And look how close it is. It's not in another room. It's literally right next to it. It does very slow movements. And actually, 
on thick carpet rugs like this I think it might struggle a little bit even though it seems to work fine following someone on this type of carpet but hardwood floors and carpets should both be fine with this I'm not sure what it's actually doing because the charging dock station is right there and it's taking a long time and I just find it easier just to manually shut it down with the button at the back and then just put it onto the dock myself hello Luna go charge That's another command for it to go to its dock. But it keeps going random places. So this is where I usually have to step in and do it myself. So unfortunately that doesn't work so great. Okay, so that's everything I wanted to showcase to you guys. My final thoughts on the AI pet dog Luna. I actually think for $379, they have done a very good job with the capabilities of this. The app is packed with various different things that you can do with it. The target market for this, I would say it's more around maybe 16 years old or younger. Um, they would have a lot of fun, especially younger children. They would really enjoy playing with this. And with the app, you know, using it as a remote control, having interactions with its emotions, trying to mimic a real dog, I think is the kind of idea and the mission behind the building of this product and for me personally there's a lot of downsides as well unfortunately like a lot of the time when I'm just giving voice commands it's not recognizing it the fact that you always have to have the app open and connected to it for it to understand the voice commands I think if they can be a little bit independent from that that will also be a very big benefit so you don't have to open up the app all the time to do various different things certain commands you would need to have the connection with the app which of course it's not so great but when it does work it does work very well one thing i would say is you do get tired by saying hello luna all the time if they can change that so you can say just luna like a real dog because you're constantly greeting it over and over again you get very tired from just saying hello like a hundred times within like the first 20 minutes so if that can be changed in a future software update then that would also be great Charging wise, I think the battery life from 100%, if you're just constantly playing with it, it will give you about maybe three hours, two to three hours of battery life, which is more than enough to get some good playing time with it. When it's on its automatic autopilot mode, it will just constantly run around. It will start maybe singing to itself. It will start looking for you, calling for your name, all of those really cool, fun things. But that could also be distracting. Like if you're just there watching TV, and then Luna comes in and it's just hitting into things. And obstacle avoidance was one of the things that I was also disappointed because it wasn't very good at avoiding a lot of the obstacles I have around the house, especially the legs of shelves and stools and dining chairs. It just kept smashing into them. So that wasn't so great. When it gets near to like your staircase, if you have it upstairs, it also generally by the capabilities of it should avoid going down steps because it does edge detection that also wasn't the case it didn't detect any edge and it would just go over and just tip over if i turn it on on this desk right now which i don't recommend anyone should do it will just fly over and it wouldn't stop right at the end so it's not quite there with a lot of the ai features that it's in there but for everything that you do get the quality of it you know all of the other things around the app that i've showcased to you I think this is actually a very good option, especially for younger children, and it will make the perfect birthday gift. Anything else you guys want to know about the capabilities of Luna, as always, drop a comment down below. Hopefully you found that useful, and I'll leave a link in the description for the Indiegogo campaign of where you can check this out, and maybe get the early bird pricing before it goes public, and you'll have to pay the retail price. Otherwise, make sure to subscribe. Plenty of really cool tech gadgets coming out in the near future, and I'll catch you guys at the next one. Take care.